This is the Hearts of Iron 4 Advanced Pre-Release Guide, Episode 1. If you haven't already seen the Basic Battle Plans video, I suggest checking that out first. Hotkeys are incredibly important in any real-time game, especially one you're playing online in multiplayer, but it can also make your single-player experience significantly more efficient. Let's start in the top left corner of the screen where you can see several buttons. Included in that row of buttons is the country flag that you are playing as. If you look at the top row of a standard North American keyboard, you would see that it spells the word QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. In this case, the Hearts of Iron 4 team have used those keys along with the continuation U and I to map up with the buttons across the top of the screen. Q is your country flag, including the politics section where you can hire ministers and customize your war staff. Then you have W, which is the research. You can see that is the first gray button on the top there. Then you have E as the diplomacy, R as trade, T as construction, Y as production, U as deployment, and I as logistics. The next part of the keyboard we'll be moving to is the bottom row of a typical American keyboard, Z, X, C, V. These buttons are used to give orders to your army and naval forces. Let's start by taking a look at the army forces. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen when you have selected an army or an army group or even just a few divisions from a specific army, you'll see the battle plans control panel pop up and specifically the four in the middle that you can see grouped together here. These correspond directly to the Z, X, C, and V keys. Z will allow you to add or change a particular front line Line. Then you have X, which provides you with an offensive line. Then you have C, which can give you a fallback or a defensive line. And finally, V, which allows you to create a garrison zone type of order. These are the four most common orders you'll be utilizing, and so memorizing these hotkeys can be very valuable. These four keys also apply to giving orders to your naval units. You'll see that all naval units have four different stances that they can take while they are out away from their port. You have patrol, search and destroy, convoy raiding, and convoy escort. These four stances correlate directly to the Z, X, C, and V keys at the bottom of the keyboard. If you wanted to patrol a particular zone, for example, you could select your naval units, hit the Z key, and then select the zones you wanted to patrol. Next, let's check out the map modes in the bottom right corner of the screen. F1 opens the army view, which is the standard map mode that you will be playing in 90% of the time. F2 opens the naval view, which you'll use when you want to see the status of your patrols. Where do you have naval superiority? Where is the enemy gaining naval superiority? And where are your ships and what are they doing? F3 gives you the air view, which removes most of the clutter from the ground area, allowing you to see exactly where your air bases are and what your air units are currently assigned to and where you have air superiority and where, of course, your enemy has air superiority. Next, let's look at the smaller buttons to the right-hand side of those larger ones. F4 is the top button, and it represents the supply view. This allows you to see where you have supply bottlenecks and where your supply is doing well. It also grants you handy buttons that you can use to improve the infrastructure level or the port level of areas where your supply may be bottlenecked. The second button down that looks like a small flag is the States Map Mode. It can also be accessed using the F5 key. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly what this map mode does. The name suggests that it allows you to see the status of the various states within your empire. Perhaps it shows you the number of building slots available in those states and maybe the status of the infrastructure. The small flame can be accessed via the F6 button. It is the Resistance View. This allows you to, at a glance, find out which of your occupied territories is causing you the most problems. As you may already know, occupied territory can eventually have resistance grow to the point where it's damaging your infrastructure, your factories, and preventing you from moving supplies through the area. The small box under that can be accessed via the F7 key. It is the resource map mode. This hides all ground units and specifically shows you icons for all of the resources in the game. This includes things like oil, tungsten, and steel. And that will allow you to plan which areas you need to expand into in order to get access to those resources. The next box down, the shaking hand, is the diplomacy map mode, also accessible via F8. As in other Paradox Grand Strategy games, you will select this in order to colorize the map in a way that makes it clear who your allies and who your enemies are. 
Finally, the last map mode in the bottom right is the star, or the factions map mode. This makes it very clear which faction every country in the world belongs to. The Allies, the Axis, the Common Turn, or maybe something brand new. The final group of keys we'll talk about are on the middle row of a standard North American keyboard. S, F, and G. S allows you to split your armed forces into two equal pieces. This is very valuable if you wanted to, say, grab all of the forces in a particular province, split them in half, have half stay to defend and half retreat or half attack or half move and flank some other direction. The F key works just like in other Paradox games and can be used to locate the position of a state, province, or nation somewhere on the world map. The G key stands for group, and in other Paradox games, this allows you to take multiple armies or multiple fleets and merge them together into one army or one fleet. We know that in Hearts of Iron 4, this will work for fleets. We have seen it on several World War Wednesdays, but we do not know if it will work for armies as they have a very different method of organization. I have been unable to determine what A and D do in the context of Hearts of Iron 4. If anybody has any ideas, please post them in the comments and I'll throw an annotation into this point in the video if we ever do find out what those buttons do. Next, we have a number of tips about organizing your armed forces. You may notice when creating battle plans that it will have a color, either green, yellow, or red. The color indicates whether or not you have a sufficient number of divisions selected to carry out the indicated order. Green means you have plenty of divisions, yellow means you're getting very close, and red means you do not have enough divisions to properly carry out the selected order. Another quick tip, you can hold down the ALT key to quickly and easily edit your battle plan. Hold down ALT and grab a front line in order to resize it. Hold down ALT and grab one of the arrows in order to change the way in which your front line will move. You can change the arrow anywhere, the beginning, the end, or even the middle. Why change the arrow? Well, you might want to put emphasis on capturing certain areas first. In this example, you can see he moved the arrow to make sure that the hole in the northern line was captured before the rest of the line pushed forward. This allowed him to secure his flanks and prevent a push that would cut him off from supply. You can, of course, hold your mouse over the arrow to see the way that the AI is expecting the battle to progress. It will show you the provinces it will plan to take first, and in fact will wait on taking other provinces until that part of the line has caught up. In addition, if you hover over a battle plan while holding shift, you can see what provinces the AI is currently putting a high priority on. Black means the AI is doing everything it can to take that province now. Then if you see the red provinces, those are the ones it's planning to take next. And finally, the green provinces have the lowest priority. The AI will certainly try to take them, but it will put less emphasis on it, and the stronger units will go towards the black and the red provinces. And one final note, you can also change the color of your armies and army groups. This can be very valuable if you want to use multiple armies or army groups on a single front line and you'd like to keep things organized. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the others in the guide listed here on the screen. You'll also find me streaming on this YouTube channel and on Twitch under the handle Bridger15.